Is mankind good or evil? How can masses of people live together in harmony? What is the proper relation between individual and community? While Joyce and Wolf were exploring the inner psyche in their streams of consciousness, other authors returned to questions that had been central to great works of literature in the past. Shakespeare's The Tempest, Swift's Gulliver's Travels, Dickens's Hard Times. With this difference, the shared Christianity that once legitimized but also humanized the state's authority over the individual was now in decline. Faith in God was being replaced by faith in science. Following the First World War, most writers were pessimistic. In 1922, T.S. Eliot's great poem, The Wasteland, imagined thousands of years of Western culture reduced to a heap of fragments in a squalid, trivial world where people could connect nothing with nothing. But in 1923, the popular writer H.G. Wells published a novel called Men Like Gods, describing a utopia where people live peacefully without religion or state control, communicating by telepathy and benefiting from advanced science. There was really no need for God, only proper education. A debate began, with one book answering another. In 1926, D. H. Lawrence published The Plumed Serpent, a novel set in Mexico in which democracy and Christianity are replaced by a dictator who identifies with an ancient pagan god. Lawrence was aware of Mussolini. In 1932, Aldous Huxley ridiculed the optimism of H.G. Wells. In a novel called Brave New World, here people do live in harmony, but only because their lives are controlled from birth to death by technology, soft drugs and trivial entertainment. They are happy because they are mindless. The horrific experiences of fascism, Nazism, Stalinism and six years of global warfare changed the shape of the debate. In 1948, George Orwell published the most celebrated dystopic novel ever written. 1984. In Orwell's novel, there is no attempt to engineer happiness. People are constantly controlled by the most brutal repression. Information and language are systematically manipulated so that the state will always seem to be right. War is perpetual and anyone opposing the government is a traitor. Yet, one aspect of 1984 is paradoxically optimistic, and I think explains the novel's continuing success. Despite everything, the hero, Winston Smith, cares about the truth, about memory, about the past, and he is capable of love. He writes down his thoughts. Writing, and by implication reading, are in themselves noble acts of rebellion. So 1984 creates a strong narrative where all the virtues are with the sensitive, literate, 
individual and all devices with the state. As we identify with Winston and sympathize with his suffering, we imagine ourselves as individuals in an unequal battle with an evil state.